wanting to spend a little bit of time with you now to actually look at some of the resources that we can put into our site. So we're ready basically to start adding content now. And what we want to do is look initially at, well, what can we do to make this site look more interesting? What can we do to make this site to bring in some of that paragraph text, some images, maybe some files as well. So we're going to kick off by looking at the resources that are available. So the difference between, I suppose, resources and activities is that activities are more the interactive elements. It's usually the items that require users to interact, to click on things, to answer questions, to submit assignments. Whereas the resources are much more about information sharing, information pushing, so that we're pushing information out to the users, which they can read, download, maybe it's a video to watch or something like that. So I'm currently within my induction course that I've been creating through this video series. And I'm now looking at adding some resources to it. So ensuring that I have my editing turned on. So for anybody who's um, not at that step, just remember, so clicking on your course administration cog in the top right hand side, going down to the second option, which would be turn editing on if it's not already on. Now mine says turn editing off, which means it is already on. And we can tell that because I have lots of the add and activity or resource buttons and the edit buttons and that on my page. So I know that this is set up ready for me to edit in my site. So the first thing that I want to do and the main thing that I'm going to show you here is the label resource. And it's quite amazing how flexible um, this resource is and how much you actually end up using it when you're developing content. So I've got the word add an activity or resource in the bottom right hand side of every section. Now generally what I do is I always click on that one in the section where I want to insert the resource or the activity. But look, at the end of the day, if you do put it in the wrong place, like we covered off in one of the earlier videos, you can click and drag any resource or activity anywhere within your site. So if you do put it in the wrong spot, it doesn't matter, you can move it. But they just provide it at the bottom of every section, so it makes it easier for you to locate content where you want it. So I'm going to kick off by clicking add an activity or resource. And this is now the big long list showing all the activities and resources that are available within my Moodle site. So in the case of Learnbook, there's a lot of additional activities that are provided on top of what Moodle will give you by default. I mean, in some of our later videos, we do cover off some of those. But in my case, I'm wanting to scroll down to the bottom of the list here, and you'll see that the last bunch of items, the last seven or eight of them, are all your resources. Now, I really like this menu bar because we can simply click on any of these, and it does give you a description on the right-hand side as to what they are, what they might be good for, um, and in some cases, it'll give you samples of why you might actually use them as well. So for this particular example, I'm wanting to use under resources, I'm wanting to click the label activity. So I'm going to say label and then I'm going to click add. <clears throat> now the label is quite simple really. There's not a lot to it. All we're really doing with this label is using the editor to create content. So a label might be something as simple as a heading. It might be some paragraph text. It can really be anything that you want along the lines of whatever we can do with this editor, we can do within a label. So I might say something about um, our uh, in within our label here. I might put in a heading. I might say, look, I, I need another heading here that's going to be some subheadings to my section. So we might say um, I was going to insert it around the, our mission and our values. So my heading might just say our mission. So I'll put that in. Or maybe I'll highlight it. I'll make it bold. And I might make choose to make it a little bit larger. So I have a label here that says our mission. That's all I need to worry about. All I'm really focusing on is what I do in the, te in the text box up here. I scroll to the bottom and say save and return to course. So it's put this um, heading under here. So I've got, you know, it's currently sitting under the general tab there. But maybe I actually want to put it under my our vision and our, um, sorry, our mission and our values tab. So I'm going to drag that up. I'm going to drag this heading down and put it in there. So as you can see um, by that demonstration, I can move things around. It doesn't matter exactly where I put them. Now with this particular thing, this particular label, that heading is in its own right now. So what I might like to do is I might actually like to do a quick little thing about duplicating this. So I would like another heading called our values to be in this section as well. So instead of having to go back in and create a brand new label from scratch, because I already know what size I, I have this. I know that that's the size that I want and that looks okay. So I'm going to click the edit icon that relates to that particular label. And I'm just going to simply go down to the fourth item down that says duplicate. I'm going to click duplicate. 
And now I'm gonna have two our mission labels uh, or headings. What I'm gonna do is on the second one, I'm now just gonna edit and edit settings. So I've copied everything across and I'm just gonna change mission to vision. And I'll scroll down and click save and return to course. So now I've got myself two headings here. Now what I can also do, as you might have spotted when I was in this uh, menu bar before, is when I click on the edit bar, when I have um, along any of my labels here, I do have the ability to move activities or resources and indent them basically. So you can sort of set up a little bit of a hierarchy to indicate that something is maybe like a, a subcategory or a subsection of what you've done up above. So I might say our mission is going to be indented and our vision will be as well. And then I can put some content in between those because they're separate items as they currently stand. So the next thing might be to go in and add another label activity or another label resource. So I'll scroll down my list and I'm going to select label again and I'm going to click add. So this time I might want to do some paragraph text and I might want to do some maybe some linking within that paragraph text. <clears throat> so I might write in here, I might say please watch our YouTube video about our company values. <clears throat> Click here to open the video. So that might be the first bit of text that I want. And then I'm going to press enter on my keyboard and I might then type in another one that says download <clears throat> our mission statement here. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to provide two links in this example. One of these links is to an external website, that being a, a pretend YouTube channel, for example. And then the other one here about our mission statement is that I actually want to provide a link to a file that is actually within my site. So it's actually a file that's on my server. Now, one other thing I just wanted to touch on whilst I'm here is you might notice that there's actually quite a large space between my please watch my first sentence and my second download um, second uh, sentence here. And the difference is with this is that when I press enter, because I'm working within Moodle and it is actually HTML, it's, web, it's a website, so it's web language here. When I press enter on the keyboard, it actually inserts a new paragraph. So it, it's actually a paragraph mark. If I don't actually want to insert a paragraph and I just like to break to the next line, I need to press shift enter. And I'm now typing on the next line. So this next sentence is <clears throat> all about Dot, dot, dot. So I'm now actually I'm now actually typing on the new line. So can you see the difference between that? So enter is a paragraph mark. Shift enter just breaks to the new line. All right. So now I've done that. That's okay. I don't need that little bit of text there. So what I'm wanting to do is under here, when it says click here, I'm wanting the user to click there to open the video. So I'm going to highlight the word that says click here because that's going to be the text that actually takes them to YouTube. In my editor, I'm going to go up to the little chain icon, the little link icon there, and I'm going to click the link, and I'm going to just basically paste or type in my URL. So now because this is an external website, and I'm sorry, I went to Google, we'll do YouTube. <clears throat> so I'm just going to place into there that that is my external website link. And I have the ability to choose whether or not I want it to open in a new window. So sometimes it can be great, especially when you're linking outside of the LMS, to open the page in a new window. And that might be really good because then that way you don't lose the person from the LMS. Sometimes if you don't open that in a new window and the person clicks on it, they get taken to an external site, they get distracted, um, and they're now no longer in the LMS. So they've now, not, uh, they actually have to actively navigate back to it. It's not just as easy as closing the tab that's opened. So that might be one of the examples as to why I do it. <clears throat> so as you can see, click here is now an active link. And when the user clicks there, it's going to take them to an external page. And in this case, it's YouTube. My second option that I have here is to download our mission statement. So I might say that this is a particular file that I was wanting to create or that I was wanting to do, and I'm actually wanting to link to it. <clears throat> so what I can do here is in this case, I can double click again on the word or the words or paragraph that I want to make an active link. And I'm going to go up to the link icon again, so to my chain in my text editor. But this time, instead of adding a link and, and typing in or copying and pasting a link, I'm actually going to click Browse Repositories. So what's actually happening here is that we're now actually browsing a repository of that file and we're looking for that potentially on our server. So we're actually looking for that um, as a file that might actually exist somewhere on our server. 
Now I've sort of said that that might be a, a PDF file, it could be an Excel file, it could be a Word file. Um, in my case, I might go to uh, Pixabay here and I might just search for a mission statement. Let's just say we'll search for this and we'll say submit. And we'll just see what comes up here. All right, so I've got a statement here. So I'm gonna say this little photo about ethics here is um, what I'm going to do. So I've selected that file there. Um, I'm gonna make a copy of that file and it's gonna be placed onto my server, so into my system here. And I'm gonna say select this file. So what I'm actually doing is, so instead of it being an external link, I'm actually linking to a resource that is now located on my server. So whether it's an external link or an internal link, we can do it all within the label activity. Once I'm happy with that, I scroll to the bottom and I click save and return to course. So now what you can see here is that I have, not only have I done heading text with labels, I've also done little paragraph text as well. Now I could choose to indent that maybe once, maybe twice, and I can move that up uh, here, maybe between our mission and our vision, so that text is now sitting within that. So you can sort of see that we can do quite a lot of things with our label activity. Now something else that we might like to do, for example, is we might want to embed a video um, into our site. And once again, to embed videos into our site, we are literally going to be using our label activity. It's gonna be the same thing again. So this time, what I might do is I might navigate to, so I'm just gonna jump across here and I'm gonna open a new tab and I'm gonna call, I'm gonna just do a search on YouTube for our mission plus YouTube. And we'll just find potentially a video that we're wanting to use. So I'm gonna open up this uh, video here and we'll say that this is the video that we'd like to play on our site. All right, so this is the one that we're going to grab. All right, so what I'm gonna do in this case, um, the quickest and easiest way to provide a link on your, um, onto your site, onto your Moodle site, is to copy the URL of a video. So this works for YouTube or Vimeo, so either one it will work. And if I copy the URL of that video, and then go back to my course. <clears throat> if I create or add an activity or resource and I go and create a label again. So we go back into a label and we click label. We scroll down and we click add. Now what I need to do is in this label, I simply just need to paste that URL. So again, it's a either YouTube or Vimeo URL. It doesn't work for any URL, but it works for these ones. So find it in YouTube, open the page where the video is and copy that URL bring it into the label activity and paste it into the label. Now, if I was to save this right now, it's just going to be text. So I don't really want that. I actually need to make this an active link. So I'm going to select the whole link. And like just we did um, in the example just before, we'll go up and select the chain icon and we'll click on the chain and we'll paste in the exact same URL into that URL box. So we're just making that an active link. So as you can see now, when I hover over it, it's an active link. All I now need to do is scroll down to the bottom of my page and click save and return to course. Now what you'll actually see here is that we've now embedded the YouTube video into our site. So no longer does the user have to leave my site and go to YouTube to watch this video, they can see it right within the platform. Now one little trick just to be aware of with this is that when I import videos in, an, or sorry, embed videos in this format into my Moodle site, they will always center on the page. So if I was to turn editing off, this video will always take center position um, when it comes to alignment within my page. So just be aware of that, but that's how it will then sit. So we've had a look at a few things now. So not only can we have we done headings, we've done paragraphs, we've done links, and we've even embedded a video all through using the label activity. So there's a lot of things that we can do, and it's really, really powerful, a really great way to actually be able to bring in more content into our site.